subscribe my channel p sarala hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time i post a new lesson welcome to another class of the locomotion in this class we are going to learn about muscle contraction so it is explained by a theory which is known as sliding filament theory so this theory is explained by two scientists namely hansen and huxley so these are the two scientists who explain the sliding filament theory so here in the name itself uh, sliding filament so thin filament slide over the thick filaments so that's why the theory is known as sliding filament theory so this theory involves five steps so first one is excitation of the muscle and second one is the formation of cross bridges third one is power stroke fourth one is recovery stroke and the fifth is relaxation of the muscle so first step excitation of the muscle so in order to contract a muscle fiber so the impulse should come from the central nervous system so from the brain so from the brain the impulses come to the effective organ so it may be hand or a leg or whatever it may be effective organ comes to the motor neuron so so this is the motor neuron and these are the telodendrites so the end of the telodendrite contains synaptic sacs so when the impulse comes to the telodendrites and to the synaptic sacs in the synaptic sacs neurotransmitters are present which which are excreted into the synaptic cleft so that is a gap which is present between the neuron and the muscle fiber this is the synaptic cleft so acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which is liberated to the synaptic cleft this acetylcholine uh, the receptors which are present on the post synaptic membrane that is the sarcolemma so attaches to the receptors on the sarcolemma and the sarcolemma is excited so action potential is transmitted to the sarcolemma from the sarcolemma action potential leads to the t tubule so this is the t tubule so on either side of the t tubule is cisternae are present cisternae are the storehouses of the calcium as the action potential comes to the t tubule and it is spread to the cisternae then the calcium ions from the cisternae are liberated into the sarcoplasm so this is the sarcoplasm so in the sarcoplasm we you know this is the thin filament this is the thick filament so thin filament contains uh, three types of uh, protein molecules that is uh, troponin tropomyosin and uh, f actin so this is the f actin so helically bound uh, globular molecules uh, form the f filament uh, adjacent to the f filament uh, yellow color tropomyosin is present on the to tropo tropomyosin at regular intervals troponin is present troponin contains uh, three molecules troponin c i and uh, t so calcium molecules attached to the troponin c of the troponin so once the calcium ions are attached to the to the uh, thin filaments uh, then the formation of cross bridges starts so these are the calcium ions these are attached to the troponin c of the troponin when these are attached to the troponin c so then troponin t moves the tropomyosin away from the active sites of the f filament so these are the thick dark dots are the active sites on the thin filament so these are exposed or unmasked so when this occurs there is a change occurs in the myosin or the thick filament so this is the head of the myosin head contains two sites that is atp binding site and the actin binding site so first atp binds to the atp binds to the atp binding site and it is hydrolyzed into adp and inorganic phosphate in the presence of an enzyme which is known as atp as enzyme so energy is liberated during this hydrolysis so this energy is useful for the binding of uh, myosin head to the active sites on the actin filament and forms the cross bridge so the head of the myosin attaches to the actin 
molecule by active binding site. So, actin binding site which is present on the myosin attaches to the active site of the actin filament and forms the cross bridge. So, here cross bridge is formed. So, whenever the cross bridge is formed, phosphate, inorganic phosphate is released into the sarcoplasm. So, then conformational change occurs in the myosin head and it pulls the and it pulls the actin molecule towards the myosin. So, that is known as power stroke. So, cross bridge pulls the actin filament towards the M line or towards the e inner side of the A band. So, this is the A band. So, from one Z line to another Z line, this is the sarcomere. So, the actin filaments slide over the myosin filaments. That is why the theory is known as sliding filament theory. So, the length of the A band does not change during contraction, but the length of the I band shortens. So, why the actin filaments are dragged towards the M line? So, they slide over the myosin or the thick filaments because the cross bridges pull the actin filaments deep into the A band. That is why the length of the actin I band reduces, length of the I band reduces and also length of the H zone. So, the only the myosin filaments present this area is known as a H band, H zone. So, as the actin moves inwards the H zone also reduces. You have to remember during contraction the length of the A band does not change, but the length of the I band and H zones are shortened. So, this result into the contraction of the muscle and next as the myosin pulls the actin inwards, then ADP also released from the myosin head. So, then another ATP molecule binds to the myosin head. So, it becomes relaxed, the myosin head becomes relaxed and it binds to another ATP molecule. So, when it binds to another ATP molecule, the cross bridge is broken down. So, here there is a no connection between myosin and actin. So, there is a gap. So, the cross bridge is not formed. You have to remember one thing, whenever myosin head binds to the ATP molecule, then the cross bridge is broken down. Okay. So, that is known as a recovery stroke. So, next what happens? So, this ATP molecule is again hydrolyzed into ADP and inorganic phosphate and liberates energy and this energy is useful again to bind the myosin head to the active sites on the actin filament. So, this process is again goes on. So, that is known as a cross bridge cycle. So, cross bridge cycle occurs until the sarcolemma receives the stimuli from the neuron. So, power stroke and recovery stroke are continued until the cross bridge cycle is present. Once the cross bridge cycle repeated, the length of the sarcomere, length of the sarcomere reduces. So, that is the contraction occurs. So, when the motor impulses stops, when the impulse coming from the neuron stops, what happens? The calcium ions which are present in the sarcoplasm are pumped back to the cisternae. Once the calcium ions are pumped back to the cistern A, so deficiency of calcium ions occurs in the sarcoplasm. So, the troponin C cannot bind to the calcium ions because calcium ions are less in number. So, if the calcium ion, ions are not bind to the troponin C, then it cannot make the tropomyosin to unmask the active sites on the F filament. So, active sites are not exposed then no cross bridge formation occurs between actin and myosin filaments. 
so contraction stops and the actin filament slowly move back to their original position so that is known as relaxation so in this you have to remember so the cross bridge cycle it is very important so the cross bridge cycle occurs until the atp are supplied and this atp are supplied from the mitochondria which are present in the sarcoplasm so this is about the contraction of the muscle hope you understand the muscle contraction